From the LUTV Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, California, this is Brief News Brief, a brief look at today's trending news topics. Proudly combating the thought police since 2016, here's your host, James Heaney. I'm James Heaney, and this is your Brief News Briefing. And tonight's the State of the Union. But I can save you a lot of time. I can sum it all up. The State of the Union is, it's shut down. Still, it's the longest American shutdown in history. Longest history. You know, it's the longest government shutdown in American history. And it's starting to seem like Donald Trump and Coulter and Rush Limbaugh don't really care. It's almost seeming as if they like this government being shut down, which shouldn't surprise us because we know that they're into this whole dominance thing. (laughs) But they're kind of into it, and it's weird. I know, I know. They're masquerading it as this national security thing, but how is not paying TSA workers and Coast Guard people, you know, people whose job it is to defend our national security, how is that helping our national security? Don't you think that it's put at, at least, if terrorists only need to be one right one time and we have to be right all the time don't you think this is a time that we're risking terrorists getting one right thing i don't know it's just like everyone knows that this wall is not some sort of insurmountable security apparatus most terrorists are coming in over planes you can go over a wall you can tunnel under a wall hell you can go through a wall just hide in the back of a car and then drive through a border crossing area sure you might get caught but you might get through the symbol the wall is a symbol there's a reason that trump didn't get a wall when he had the majority in both the house and the senate he didn't get the wall because he didn't have the votes he doesn't have the votes now he didn't have the votes to kill obamacare and that didn't happen so so, so the problem is is he's breaking all these campaign promises and he's sick of it i don't blame him but don't make promises you can't keep oh no one knew that this immigration thing was gonna be such a hard subject yeah they did They've always known it. This is a bunch of big theatrics that nihilists out there are getting a hell of a hoot about. They love it. They love this shutdown government and it's sick. Now, Nancy raised the stakes of the shutdown today. She asked President Trump to postpone his State of the Union address, which I just gave the sum up. It shut down. What kind of state is there? Nonetheless, she's saying postpone the union address or deliver it in writing. Now, she's citing security uh, security concerns relating to the partial government shutdown. This, of course, could also deny Trump the opportunity to make his case for the border wall um, in a primetime television address, which would be actually the second time he's gotten a chance to pitch this to the people. The people aren't buying it. This comes as White House officials are begging Republican senators to hold off on signing a bipartisan letter that would call for an end of the government shutdown. Now in its 26th day, just open the damn government already. The White House is not responding to the cancellation of the State of the Union address, and Pelosi says the speech requires hundreds of people working on logistics of security, and most of those people are either furloughed or victims of some sort of the president's shutdown. So the point is, we don't have the security. There's a sick, shameful side of myself that feels better when I see that somebody else has it worse than me. And if you're like me, then you're going to really love this story. Sit down, get some super coffee. Everything is falling apart in Britain. Yesterday saw the crushing, embarrassing defeat of Prime Minister Theresa May's uh, breakfast divorce, breakfast, (laughs) Brexit divorce deal, which was soon followed by the Parliament insulting her and disparaging her for hours. Jeez. Politics in the old country sure can get rough. Here, we're so nice to each other. So today, it was widely expected that she might resign or be swept away with the trash. But guess what? No one wants to lead the hell brigade out of the EU, so Theresa May, you are still the woman for the job. Brexit is tearing British society and political classes apart. Warring tribes of leavers and remainers battle it out, and no one can really figure out what to do in this high-profile divorce on the world stage. So for the past two years, since the Brexit vote in the summer of 2016, Theresa May has been negotiating with European leaders and has written this 585-page deal that is now defunct, and she has until Monday to fix it. 
Wow, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> it sounds completely reasonable though, right? Rewrite by Monday and then we'll all be good. Some are saying that May is running a zombie government that could be the first predicator in the pending end of days led by the zombie apocalypse or British people murmuring Brexit means Brexit. Some say Brexit is a black hole that devours all light. Some are calling this the biggest crisis in the UK since World War II. Some are wanting a second vote on the Brexit deal, a people's vote that could override the vote in 2016, but that seems to be off the table. The Prime Minister is being asked repeatedly what she will do to improve her deal and win support from the divided parliament. What is she gonna do? <sighs> At least we don't have problems like that over here. <laughs> <clears throat> Yesterday, the confirmation hearing for Trump's pick to be the next Attorney General of the United States, William Barr, kicked off in Senate chambers and they continue on into it today. Because Republicans control the Senate, Barr does not need any Democratic votes to win confirmation. So he is essentially guaranteed the job. He's no noob, though. He was the AG already in the 90s under President Bush, dubbed the boy AG since he was the youngest man at the time to assume the position in his early 40s at the time. Nonetheless, there is still regular order, and yesterday lawmakers questioned him about his record and character, which he's no longer the boy that he used to be. Now he's got a record of things that he's done. And he, they want to know how he might handle the Mueller investigation, the big question on senators' minds, would Barr seek to influence the outcome of the Mueller probe? Now, Barr pledged to let Mueller finish his work and release as much information about his findings as possible, but questioned, I'm uh, sorry, cautioned that the Justice Department regulations may prevent any report written by Mueller from being made public. Senator Dianne Feinstein came forward and said on Wednesday that she would not vote for the attorney nominee, uh, the attorney general nominee, William P. Barr, unless he were to commit to releasing the report generated by the special counsel investigation. Now, while she praised his answers to the questions about the special counsel, she also said that she felt Barr's description of what he would do with Mueller's final report was confusing and she could not vote for him unless he committed to releasing it. I mean, we the public, we want to see the report, right? You think if Mueller came back and was like, well, after almost two years, dozens of indictments and guilty pleas, Trump is clean, no collusion, that they wouldn't want the public to see the report? God, no. The only reason they don't want the public to see the report is if it's bad news, like about like how our government has been compromised by a foreign hostile government. Like if the report says the Cold War is having a massive resurgence thanks to greed and dirty, po dirty politics, the Russian government has spent decades exploiting. Now, if the report is complete and we don't see it, you can guarantee there's something dirty in that report that they don't want Americans to know. <laughs>